Hello everyone, I've finally got some equipment delivered for my Talon. Boy, I tell you, it's hard to get stuff at the moment anywhere in the world. I hope I'm not the only one having this issue because I still haven't got everything for this plane yet. But what I have got is enough to start the build and all the electronics. So I've had stuff lost in the mail on its way here. Um, just stuff I haven't been able to buy that I wanted to because it's just out of stock. So I'll just give you a run through of what I've got and what we plan to do in this video is uh, flash, um, I think we're going to flash iNav to the flight controller, just a basic flash and setup. So what I've got is uh, the Sunny Sky motor, I've got the same motor that I've got running in the um, Zod, uh, the, the Dart XL. It's a uh, 1250 kV uh, Sunny Sky 2216 motor. I wanted to get another happy model um, Express LRS long range receiver but there is nothing at all anywhere so I've gone for a, a JEP GPRC uh, 900 megahertz Express LRS so this looks nice too it's good value by the price of it anyway and there was quite a few of them available um, through Banggood so I should have probably got two but I only got one GPS module, just got my trusty BN220T GPS which are running pretty much all my planes. I've got the Bluetooth Nano here but I don't think I'm going to need that um, because the flight controller. I did want to get a F765 Maytech flight controller but again nothing available and no sign of when it's coming in. So I end up getting an F405 WTE. Um, which has built-in Express LRS um, 2.4 gigahertz. I'm not going to use that, but it does have built-in telemetry module, which is why um, I'm not going to probably need that. So I'm still going to run the 900 megahertz long range. I'll work out a way to disengage the 2.4 receiver and keep the the long range side. So this one here has a built-in come with a buzzer and you can, and, and what I do like about this, you can connect it up, although I won't be using this too often, but easy access to a port on the plane if you uh, really want to connect it up that way. So yeah, that's um, pretty much it. The plane itself's running um, a Predator 40 amp ESC, which is already in the back of it, so I can't show you that at the moment. So all I've got to get, the servos, I've got servos coming, four servos for it. They're Emacs, I can't think of the name off the top of my head, I'll put it up on the screen, but they're Emacs servos. Uh, they've been lost in the mail, so I've, I've, I've bought them way back in end of August. And um, yeah, I've just been trying to find out and get my money back on them because they've been sent back to Banggood again. So once I get money back for that, I'll probably look at buying another four servo so hopefully they don't get lost but other than that um, I would just need to get a, a camera and a, a, vi a, a video transmitter for it just for um, to the completion of the, the craft but as it is now we can we can get the electronic side of things sorted out I've got to solder all the pins on to the flight controller here which is great fun uh, it's got a capacitor in it too which we'll put on the ESC side have a bit of fun along the way and hopefully uh, I can learn some stuff and not make too many mistakes and yeah, everyone else can sort of be helped as well with the video and the progress of this build. So let's go over to iNav and we'll uh, start we'll start installing the, um, the firmware on this, the latest iNav 5 firmware. Okay, so here we are in iNav. Um, ready to do the firmware install. So what we'll do is click on the uh, firmware flasher tab down on the left hand side there and select our firmware that we want. We're going to be running iNav 5.1 at this stage. And the firmware that we want to, want to choose for this particular board is the Matec F405TESD. Now once we've done that we will select the type of firmware which is um, iNav 5.1 and load this. Um, just a quick run through just to see what we have to do if you're un unaware. If you're happy with it all then just click um, uh, flash firmware and it'll erase. Usually takes a, about a minute 
depending on the speed of your computer. So just let it do it, do its job until it's it says it's uh, successful. I'll just speed the video up here so it doesn't bore you to death. Okay, flashing successful. So what we'll do is we'll just disconnect everything. Same with the board from the USB port and reconnect everything back up again and connect. So we're, 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 we're left with this section here where we choose what type of craft. So in this instance we're going to be choosing airplane with a tail because we've got the V-tail on this. Um, any other wing usually you would just use uh, airplane without a tail if it's a delta wing etc. So we'll select airplane with tail and let all the default uh, parameters load up and then we've got our, uh, our little plane on the screen so if we move our flight controller we'll, um, we sh it should move in the same direction um, as the little plane on the screen so first thing I want to do is um, we'll go into the calibration tab and do a full calibration it's best to do this one uh, now before you, in in you install it in the plane it's just easier to do it now when you do this uh, it's rather important to make sure you've got your IMU facing up on the board so you need to check that with the, the, the website of whichever manufacturer you're using um, that's just what the INAV crew have recommended so IMU up in my case I've got to have the flight controller upside down first for its first part of the calibration so what we do acceleration cal uh, calibration please uh, place the flight controller in position shown on the image uh, it doesn't matter which particular order as long as your IMU is uh, facing up so in my case it's um, if my flight controller is it's on the bottom of the top board so yeah, I had to go to the Maytech web website there to, to find that one out I don't know why that's just um, what I found out so they recommend that you, you, you do the IMU calibration with it facing up first it's very important too to keep the flight controller extremely still when you do this we'll, we'll click calibrate accelerometer that shows the upside down position now from this instance on it doesn't matter which way so in this way I'm going to choose the uh, uh, the end it's very it's just it's a lot easier to do this on the on the table it, with it with it not installed in the in the plane you can keep it a lot more still and stable while you're doing this process because it is important so do all the six axes and once that's all done uh, you click save and reboot Okay, when it comes back on, we'll uh, next what we'll do is um, we'll load the mixer. So I'm going to choose the V-tail and this one because that's what the uh, Talon GT Rebel is. It's got four servos. You can see the layout it, it's going to want me to, to do. Having the motor on servo one, servo two is going to be void. So servo three and four. Um, are the back of the of the back of the plane and servo one and two are the uh, main main wings so we'll load the mixer we'll um, apply and load the mixer and that'll load the best settings default settings um, for the the V tail and just a quick check there you can see the layout that it wants so next Next step, we'll go into the Outputs tab and turn on the ESC. Um, I'm not too sure what this ESC I've got in here. I'm just going to leave it at standard at this stage. Um, nothing much here. I'm going to save and reboot here. We'll come back to that page a bit later on. This is just going to be a basic iNav install to start with until uh, everything's properly set up. Okay, next we're going to go into our ports tab. But at this stage, I'm not going to change anything in the in the ports section just at this stage. It's just going to be a basic INAV install before um, we put it in the plane. 
and uh, do all the pin work which we have to solder up in a minute. So next we're gonna we'll hit the configuration tab. We'll go in here. There's not a great deal to to change in these parts here. I mean, like I said, it's something we can do um, a bit later on, but it's worth checking what's what's installed here anyway. We scroll down. We'll have a look at the uh, other features here, and just have a quick run through of this. I'm not going to change anything here. Hit your turn on telemetry output if it's off, if you want your telemetry. Enable servo and motor output, that was what we did earlier. That's the same same switch. Uh, OSD is on, it's got to be on if you want to see anything in your FPV screen. And make sure permanently enable air mode is switched on as well. Um, I'm, al I'm, almost, I'm also going to turn on permanently enable uh, uh, launch mode for fixed wing, I just prefer that. Um, but that's up to you, that's your choice whether you want to risk that or not, but I turn that on. And I'm going to turn on uh, continuously trim the servos, that's quite important. So if we go over to the other side here, battery, uh, your battery monitoring, make sure that's switched on. And uh, in this section here, the battery settings, you can you can put in what type of battery you're using. In my case, I'm going to be flying a 10,000 milliamp battery in this. It's the same battery I fly my Dart with. You can set your your critic, your low voltage and your critical battery levels here. I usually do 25% uh, for my warning and 15% for critical. And when you finish there, click save and reboot. Okay, next we're going into fail safe. Very important. Make sure your return to home is it, it, it's set to return to home, and save and reboot again. Okay, next we're going to go into advanced tuning. Not a great deal to really do in these others now. We've got a basic setup um, which we can start with. A lot of this I'm just going to copy and paste um, from the CLI of my ZOHD Dart XL. Because they're a similar size plane and weight's very similar, I'm going to use the same launch settings as a start point. But I'm not going to touch that now. I'll do that later on once, on, once, once everything's installed. Um, I'm going to choose for return to home settings here. Just make sure it's um, pretty much usually it's set up pretty good, but you don't want it to land on return to home i don't anyway i i make sure that it, it'll just hover above me at around 50 meters and i can bring it down manually um, i turn on climb before return to home so if it's if it's low and it loses range it will climb up to its height and come back save and reboot and we'll go into the receiver tab but i'm not going to change this either because i've got no receiver installed so the mode tabs i'm not going to do just yet i'll do it later and adjustments i'm not going to worry about either so we'll uh, switch on the GPS here and select U Block 7. I'm going to turn on. Um, I'm going to turn on use the Galileo satellites as well. That'll give me more, give me more satellites, and that's pretty much it. We'll save and reboot that. Now we're pretty close to coming to the end of this here. We don't need to do much more. Um, uh, don't have to worry about nothing with the magnetometer or mission control. I'm not running a compass. Uh, the OSD go in here, but I think I'll do this one later too. I'll just copy and paste from the CLI of my other planes. They all run the exact same OSD. I like to keep it that way with all my planes. So what I'm looking at in the screen is the same basically I don't have to search for certain things but what I will do is upload the font that I do use so that's already done and then we'll just copy and paste the OSD section of the CLI from one of my other planes into this plane and that will do it so we'll save that and next stage uh, LED strips if you've got LEDs you're going on you're going to want to turn the LED tab on as well in your um, configuration um, we can check our sensors there to make sure everything's moving. If you move move the plane, you should see a bit of movement there. Um, and last but not least, we'll go into the black box tab because this has an SD card. We want to um, set this up. So this here, you just set up to um, 
to use the onboard onboard logging and this part here we just choose you don't want it to be set at 100 percent because it's um it'll take up too much of your sd card i believe but this is another section here i could even copy and paste from from the cli from the cli of my um zhd dart because it's got a black box too and exact same settings once I'm done there, once done there, just click save and reboot and we're pretty much set up now with our flight controller and we can go into the, um, the fun part of doing all the pins and setting up all our, our in, doing all our install into the plane. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next part of this build.